Hey y'all, welcome to another Why You Like This Song. Today's song is going to be Melody Day by Caribou. In these videos, I do a reaction to the song, and then I explain a few music theory elements that make the song good. Don't worry, it's not going to get too complicated. I look forward to hearing this, haven't heard it before, and of course I got my handy dandy notebook here, ready to take some notes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell. Also, in the comments, feel free to put a song that you would like to hear me tell you why you like this song. As always, I'm not going to play the whole song in this video, but if you'd like to check the song out and then come back and watch this video, the link is in the description below. All right, here we go. Oh wow, just jumps right in. I like this slightly distorted bass tone here. Got some definite like psych rock vibes going on here from like the 60s, 70s era. Alright, a little change into that section. Ooh, what are these chords? Figure that out in a second. There. It could be a mood, maybe, I don't know. There's some cool delayed guitar parts way back in the mix. Really letting it rip here on what I think is the chorus. <laughs> cool video. Bringing back that groove on the next verse, I like it. Loving this bass playing throughout. Is that keyboard part? This bass play is killing it, and the guitar playing is real subtle. Going off too. All right, all right. A little difference here. A little, probably a bridge. Oh man, this is like drony synth in the background. Could be a guitar part. God dang. A jam out ending here, maybe? Was it at the end? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was the end. Okay, cool, cool. That was fun. That was fun. Cool, lots of fun things to talk about in this video today. I think this whole video is just gonna be bass player corner though. So if you've ever seen any of my other videos, you know that there's always a little bass corner, but the bass is romping this whole thing. There's a cool bass tone with a little bit, just a little taste of distortion in there. Wait, so what's distortion? Distortion, overdrive, fuzz, crunch. These are all descriptors for gain-based effects that add a little edge to our sound. Okay, well, what's gain? It's a laundry soap, right? Uh, well, yeah, but in this case, we're talking about gain in music. Gain in music is the input volume. Volume going into the system. And if the volume going into the system is higher than the volume going out of the system, it tends to distort or break up. You might associate distortion with like heavy metal or hard rock, but it's used in all genres. There's distorted guitar in Taylor Swift songs. There's distorted guitar in Metallica songs. So let's hear the difference. Gotta tune your guitar before you use it. All right, so here are the chords of the song played with a clean tone or no distortion. <laughs> C 
so when we add distortion and no this is not the same distortion that's on the bass in the song but this is just to prove an example <laughs> So the distortion on the bass is not that much, but it gives it that bite and that edge that really propels it forward, cuts it through the mix, and kind of keeps the song pushing, right? Let's take a listen to some of that bass play because not only is the distortion cool, but the bass player really starts to go off during the chorus. Okay, and so does the drummer. But we're talking about bass. We talked about bass during a drum video, so let's talk about drums during a bass video, I guess. All right, let's listen to that. All right, now let's listen to a little of that chorus just so we can hear the bass and the drummer kind of going off at the same time. Oh man, that's killer. All right, so the vocals in that chorus are pretty simple, which give the drummer and the bass player a lot more room to go off, especially that bass player climbing way up high on the neck. Really just, that's my kind of stuff. I love it. Keep doing it, whoever the bass player of this band is. That's awesome. Uh, I don't want to overshadow the drummer going off, but it's really cool. And let's face it, bass players don't get to be the centerpiece a lot, but they should. Another cool thing in this is the use of an Uncle Ben instrument. No, I'm not talking about rice. I'm talking about from Spider-Man, Uncle Ben saying with great power comes great responsibility. And in that is a tambourine. Other instruments that fall into this are like a harmonica or an accordion or a triangle. They're all great instruments, but you know, a little bit goes a long way. It's a cool sound, but it doesn't get in your face, such as the cowbell from the Blue Oyster Cult Don't Fear the Reaper that they made the sketch of from Saturday Night Live. And of course, any Bob Dylan song with a harmonica. It keeps a cool element in there, but doesn't get in your face. So the chord changes in this song aren't your typical chord changes. I mean, they're not super weird, but there is something kind of strange feeling about them. And that is because we're using the chords from the Dorian mode. Of course, the Dorian mode is named after the song by Brother Ali. Wait, no, wait, that's not it. Although you should check out that song and basically you should check out Brother Ali. In Dorian, what we do is we start the scale instead of on the first note, on the second note. So let's see an example of that. Okay, so this is the C scale, starting on the note C. And ending on the note C. And we just go through the alphabet. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now in this scale, you might've noticed that I didn't play any of the black keys on the piano, only the white keys. That would be the Ionian or major scale. For Dorian, we are gonna play the same keys, no black keys, but this time we're gonna start on the second note, D. And that is the Dorian scale. It's sort of like the minor scale, but one note different. The sixth note of the scale is raised up. In fact, the minor scale is one of those modes. It's called Aeolian. And Technically, so is the major scale, it's Ionian. Being that this is in the C-sharp Dorian, the sixth note of the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, in this case, it raises an A to an A-sharp, allowing us to have this F-sharp chord, which would normally be a minor chord in a C-sharp minor key, but in this case, it's a major chord. That gives us one minor chord, and three major chords. That does happen normally in minor keys, but this is a different one than we're used to hearing, and it gives us a cool feeling along with the sort of psychedelia and washiness of the whole thing. This song does have some tendencies to bring back the, uh, you know, 60s, early 70s psychedelia. Uh, the tambourine, of course, is a big factor there, uh, as well as the drumming, Tom Phil thing happening in the chorus. You know, if you think of guys like Keith Moon or Mitch Mitchell, and so they really, 
take right out of the psychedelic rock playbook here on this song. There's also a kind of a cool thing with the guitar in this song. It is a little low in the mix, but it's got some cool effects running. And of course, it's got what is possibly my favorite effect. Delay. I love delay and it has many uses. It can be used to thicken up a guitar sound. It can be used to create the psychedelic washy sounds that you hear sometimes, including like if you think of like reggae or the end of Karma Police by Radiohead, when you have that There we go, folks. Singing effects again never works. In this song, and you can hear it right at the end, we definitely get that echo sort of delay where we get the ga 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 and it repeats itself. So when it comes to a delay, I'm gonna play the note one time and then it's going to keep repeating afterwards while slowly sort of fading out. And we hear that sound at the end of the song, but it's used throughout. Let's take a listen. Pretty cool effect there at the end of the song, but delay has many uses. This, of course, just being the classic echo. So when you hear that classic echo in a song, now you know that that's delay. So there's a flute part that could also be a keyboard part on say a Moog synthesizer or something of the like that acts as sort of a counter melody that sort of improvises in the background for when the vocals aren't singing and it also adds some high sounds to the song that we don't have throughout the whole thing. Let's take a listen to one of those parts. <laughs> Pretty cool and that happens throughout. Now there's one more thing I want to discuss in this video and that's yet another song that faked me out. I was expecting this song to go into a bridge section which of course if you remember the bridge is like a third part of a song that's not a verse and it's not a chorus. And after we've heard a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus it gives us like a third part of the song that makes us go ooh cool something different so we're not just going okay well I've I've heard this before. In the bridge section of this song, it kind of gives us this build up like it's going to pop back in to a chorus, but then it kind of gives us a drop off that makes me think, oh, where well, they're going to end it right there, which would have been a cool ending, but I wanted some more of that chorus. <laughs> if that was the ending to a song, that would be a really cool ending. And like a really nice mysterious way to leave off the end of a song and I really would have liked that. But then the drummer's got something else to say. So that's a really cool part with a fake out there. I thought that part could be an ending. It sounds like the ending to a song it would have been a really cool, like mysterious ending, but we wanted that chorus back and they brought it back with a fury. All in all, this is a groovy tune. I dig the psych rock vibe. I mean, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. I dig the groove. I love the fake out at the end of the bridge that made me think it was the end. Then coming in with that romp and stomping chorus, bass player, drummer, romp and stomping throughout, which is great. Love that. Cool effects on the guitar. Cool Cool effects on the keyboards, solid tune, can't wait to hear the next one. At this point, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if there's a song that you would like to know why you like this song, please leave a comment and hopefully I'll make a video of it. And I'll wrap things up as always by saying, see you in the future.